Hey, Mike Amundsen here. We're still talking about designing and building great web APIs. And um, I wanted to follow up on one of the other screencasts I did recently on testing in Postman. I mentioned that I use utility libraries in Postman, so sort of like test libraries. So I thought I'd show you how I do that in uh, Postman and show you a little bit of uh, one of my favorite libraries. So let's go over here and move over to Postman. So um, I talked about earlier about this idea of writing a, a happy and sad path uh, testing. So we saw this earlier in this uh, routine here. I'll just show you some tests. Um, so we were talking about this idea of writing a test for protocol, structure, and value. So right, you can see this right here. So I'm actually doing my protocol testing here. So I test for 200, test for content type. Then I'm doing structure testing, where I'm actually expecting a, a home uh, object home array that's full of objects has certain properties ID name rel and href so I'm testing for that and then finally I'm actually testing for what uh, values are set for some of those for the uh, ID and the name and for the rel so this idea of, of testing for protocols structure and value is a fundamental way that I, I do testing uh, now this is a great test it works really well it's real simple you just run it and then you just get your answer back real quick and uh, we come back and we see this is the actual object I get back. And then these are the results of the test. So it's very cool, very straightforward. The thing is, this gets to be a little tedious to write after a while. It's, it's sort of sort of worry. It's, it, it, it's kind of difficult and it can be a bit fiddly. I can make a mistake easily. I like the fluent interface when I'm writing tests, but it can sort of take a long time. So instead, what I did is I built um, a, a utility library that actually encapsulates a lot of that information. So let's take a look and what that utility library looks like uh, or what, what it looks like when I'm using utilities. So here I'm actually doing the exact same test we looked at before, but it takes a lot less uh, energy, a lot less time. So this is where I'm loading uh, the utilities. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll talk about that. But there's my check status. There's my check header. There's checking my object to make sure it has certain uh, uh, values, uh, certain properties. And then those properties are set to certain values. So I've got this whole series of uh, check, check status, check header, check object, check object property, checked, uh, um, there's other objects, check error objects and so on and so forth. So it's the same thing. I run this, it's real straightforward. It works really well, it's really simple. I get the same kind of experience at the end, get the same answers back and then my results are back, but it takes a lot less time to write, which is really important. So how am I doing that? How am I actually creating this library? Well, it actually turns out that what I'm doing is I'm stuffing uh, an environment variable uh, to do this. So I'm going to actually edit my collection. So I go up here to my home test and collections. And in the collections pre-request space is where I create this library. And you'll see uh, and I start with pm.globalSet. I'm actually setting a global variable called loadutils with a function. So you can go through this, and this takes a while here. I'll, I'll, I'll look at this. We'll look at this in a second. Basically, I stuff all this information, and in the end, uh, I'll do an immediate execution of it. So as soon as you pull it, it actually executes uh, on the way out. So if you go back, and I'm just going to jump back real quick to where my editing is, this line right here, globals.loadutils, uh, actually creates that JavaScript object now. For those of us who know JavaScript really well, I'm doing a really evil thing here. This is the eval function, right? So I'm evaluating a string into a JavaScript object. And a Postman is smart enough to even tell you, you know, eval can be harmful. You see the little, little answer there. As long as I trust it, it's okay. And of course, I wrote it, so I trust it. But you need to do the same thing. This is really um, a great opportunity in Postman to, to stuff some of your own utilities. But... You know, with great power comes great responsibility. It can be kind of a bummer. So let me show you, now that we sort of had that, let me show you a little bit of what those utilities actually look like. Um, so I've, I'm loading them up here in my editor. So it's really simple. I actually just loaded this here so that you can see it a little bit better. You still need to paste all of this into uh, Postman, but at least you can see kind of how the structure works here. So I got a handful of things. Check status. This is the same routine that we talked about before. I expect um this response code to be equal to something i expect this header to include so on and so forth so it's the same test but now i've wrapped them in a handy little function i have uh, ways to set an object that's a little bit of a stateful uh value i can check an object and pass its name and then go through properties i can check object properties 
I have a bunch of things that are for this media type called forms JSON, which I use quite a bit in my APIs. It's a it's a JSON object that has forms and some other links in it. So I have meta properties, page links, page link properties, the actual item collection, the, the links in the item collection, the link properties in the item collection. Um, then I have things like item properties themselves. Then I have an error object and error properties. So I have this nice little kit of all these things that I carry around with me. And I actually have a few other ones. I have ones for different media types like Siren and Uber and Mason and so on and so forth. So I always kind of know what's coming. So that is the that is the utility library that I ship around. So I start this, I plug this into the pre-request script. Now I could do this for every test, but that gets pretty uh, tedious. If I do it inside that global, then it's, it's pretty easy. It's actually available to lots and lots of places. So all of these tests actually have access to the same library. And that's really, really handy. And when I go up here and I sync this um, and, and sync this into the, uh, into the storage in the server, when I pull that API, I showed you the scripts I used before. When I pull that API and I do a local run, then I'll be able to use that same library as well. So by the way, even though it's global, since I'm only pulling a collection, I need to make sure that the pre the, the, the pre-test or pre-request tests are actually stuffed with the utility library. But that's how I do it. That's how I actually go through and create this really handy utility library and then carry it around with me wherever I go. And it really creates nice, consistent tests. It helps me follow that same protocol structure values we talked about, but I can do it in a lot less time. So that's how I do libraries. That's how, It's all talked about in the Design and Build Great Web APIs book. Find the bug at the top of the screen here. You'll find lots of other videos, and I hope to talk to you again soon.